Symbols. Potentially a huge topic, but let's just take a quick overview so that you understand what a symbol is, and for previous users of CorelDRAW, you'll get an idea of some of the enhancements that have been made to CorelDRAW 12. If I go up to the Window menu, down to Dockers, and open up the Symbol Manager, you'll see the change number one for CorelDRAW 12 is that the Symbol Manager has been added to the list of Dockers, and it's been moved over from its own isolated area. And Shift F4 to center my page, there we go. And you can see the layout of the Docker. You'll uh, get a better idea of what that's for in a moment. A symbol is something that's stored in a library and then you can use it as many times as you want in your illustration without having to uh, take any more hits on memory. In other words, it points back to the library every time you use it in your document, and it doesn't just duplicate it and create new objects for Draw to manage. I'll demonstrate that as we go. Hopefully you'll catch on. If I grab this gecko, for example, and drag him into the symbol library, and I'll grab this cat. There, I've just created two symbols. Now these symbols... If I can imagine that I want to create a pattern on this sofa, kind of take a look at what a, uh, a gecko pattern might look like, I can take the gecko, drag them out of the symbol library, and drop them onto the sofa. Here, I'll do it again. Or, I can take my gecko that's already in the diagram, and I can duplicate it. And, when I duplicate it, it adds another instance. I'm calling them instances because that's the terminology that it uses to manage multiple appearances of that one symbol. It's not copying it and creating more nodes and line segments for draw to manage. It's simply creating another instance, a pointer, a ghost, if you will. And it's a very, very simple thing for draw to do. Let me duplicate that again down here. And this time, I'm going to rotate this gecko around and maybe flip him upside down. and shrink them down a little bit for the seats. Now I'll make a couple of copies of that one. And flip that around. Excellent. You get the idea. Now with all of the work that I've been doing with the geckos, I think I'm not going to forget this guy. I'll move him up here. You can see I've now got 13 instances, I've got 13 of those on my page, but they're still all managed from the one source. So in this case, I've rotated them and I've changed their size, no problem, individually they can do that. But if I want to make a change to the properties, like the color, I go down here to Edit Symbol, my entire diagram disappears and I only have the original gecko that I used to make the symbol in the first place left. And now if I change the color, as you would any other object, let me use some of the color mixing techniques we looked at earlier to kind of dull that down. There we go. And I'll say Finish Editing Object. And you can see that color is really, really not attractive. That's not what I was looking for. Let me go back in to edit again. And I'll darken that up. Yeah, select him. There we go. That's the color I was looking for. Finish editing object. A little bit better. And you get the idea. One edit affects all instances of the object because the object is being managed from a single source. Now to quickly look at some of the other enhancements, we have the ability to export symbols, which you can then store in a local drive and use in future diagrams without having to store them only within the file they've been created in. And you can also store them on a network resource and share them around the office. We have features like scale to world units. So if you are doing a scale diagram of something that is supposed to be uh, matching real world units, you can use your symbol scale as well. And purge unused definitions. If I click that now, it's warning me that I'm about to delete all the unused symbols. So I can clean up my symbol library. Nothing happened. That's because I have one instance of that cat. I'm going to delete that. Purge unused. And now you'll see that it's cleaned that out. So if you have a library that you've drawn on for a future diagram, and that library is filled with 10, 20, 30 symbols, but you've only used a handful, you can just simply purge, and that way it simplifies what's being saved with that file in its symbol library in the future. There's a ton more I could say, but that's a good overview.